Hey guys, we are doing Vivian Lee today. It's my favourite actress. She's from my favourite film, Gone with the Wind. I've seen a million times. It's my mum's favourite film as well. It's like one of the things we used to do together is watch Gone with the Wind. Okay, now I picked this card for her for the theme of this reading and the energy she wants to get across. Now for Pentacles, obviously you can see it's a guy holding on to this gold for dear life. But this isn't actually about her trying to say she was material over money. It was more she was trying to hold herself together. It's almost like trying to hold herself together in front of the public eye, you know, so trying to hold in all the, the, the bits of her that were, because you've heard about bipolar and mental illness and things like that. So it's almost like she was trying to hold it all and contain it in front of the public eye. So that's more the energy here, not over money. That's what I'm picking up now. Here's some questions. OK, obviously, Marilyn Monroe did work for her husband. How did she feel? about Marilyn Monroe because they did work together. It was the showgirl, wasn't it? Let me find it right now. The Prince and the Showgirl. Monroe, I just wanna get the title right. With Laurence Olivier. Yeah, here we go. The Prince and the Showgirl, Laurence Olivier. So they did work together. There are photos of them all together doing the happy families kind of thing, you know, and they're both kissing Marilyn Monroe on the cheek, either both of them. But what was the actual energy? Now, this is actually, you're going to understand why she says what she does as we go for the reading. It's quite a cutting reading. She doesn't pull any punches, to be honest, in the energy. She's very upfront, how, how she came across. She wanted to hate her, but couldn't. OK, so she was older in life. Remember when Marilyn stepped in, she felt like she was losing herself a bit. I think there were already a lot of affairs going on with Lawrence by then anyway. And it was like this bundle of sexual feminine energy coming in that charmed any man in a wake. Of course, you're going to be anxious. It's uh, it's almost the same as when Brad Pitt worked with um, Mr. and Mrs. Smith and Jen would be apprehensive about somebody like Angelina Jolie coming in. It's that kind of thing. I'm sure we can understand in today's world for example. But she said she wanted to hate her, but couldn't. There was a purity of the soul there. She was very, very feminine and she could charm women as equally well as she could charm men. And she had this side of her, which was a very, very like vulnerable girl, but she was also a woman at the same time. So it was really hard because she was so vulnerable to really have any anger or hate towards her or jealousy as such so to begin with a million percent jealousy and she saw her as a threat but she tried to hold her head high and come across as more the mother figure there to support her nurture if she needed it but to begin with she did feel like she'd be a threat but it changed she didn't when she was actually spending time with her um she said that marilyn was somebody that gen genuinely would ask her that she was scared of letting her husband down so marilyn would say i'm really worried about this film your husband's very talented i'm worried about letting him down and could she give her any advice about working with her and she appreciated that vivian appreciated it because again it's that vulnerability is coming to her almost as somebody like vivian saying i respect you i need help i'm 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 over my head. I'm hearing the lines, Marilyn, so something along the lines of the energy was, I'm over my head here. I need support. I need help. And because she could sense that fear and vulnerability, it changed how she perceived her. Um, and I heard the words baby fawn. So it's almost like she was joking, say Marilyn was like a baby fawn, like a baby deer. These huge doe eyes, but at the same time, very delicate too in, in her nature. Um, she also knew her husband could be a drama queen. And in some way, she actually sympathised with Marilyn. And she liked her more when she realised they were they were not getting along. So when she realised Marilyn wasn't getting along with her husband, she actually liked her more because it was like a, a camaraderie there. As in she understands why Marilyn couldn't get on with her husband because he was a drama queen and he was hard work. So it's almost like in a way laughing like, yeah, now you know how I feel and what I have to deal with. So it wasn't as bad as what people were saying. OK, it was more they had an understanding because... Vivian was married to the man and Marilyn was working with the man and it was like the great man by the way we'll go over that as well okay so that was over Marilyn Monroe that's how she felt in the energy I keep hearing baby form it was really weird how did she feel about Clark Gable now I read ages ago she said something about she hated kissing him because he was a smoker and she didn't like his dentures so I mean I knew that to begin with and I wondered what I mean is that it what other information could she could she give us okay so she does say in some ways, she did look down on him a little. She was trained in an elite school and was a bit of a snob back then. 
She'd studied in prestigious London acting schools and was also in the theatre, and she thought he was beneath her in talents. Now, the main reason she felt that is because she was irked that he treated her like a little kid when she had far more credits to her name as serious acting by the time she met him. Now, I don't know the difference between the films. I think she did eight films before she saw him, or and I know he's done 60 in his lifetime, but it's more the quality I'm hearing. It's more the quality. So she was a bit irked that this guy was trying to treat her like, treat her like another silly little actress when she's thinking, I'm hearing more serious accolades than what he had is in acting. So she took it really seriously. Um, and also she was a little bit icy with him when he tried to charm her the way he did the other ladies and expected her to fall at his feet. Either way, she tried her best to be mature and professional throughout the film rather than another giggling actress. She wanted to be taken seriously. And in today's world, I'm even getting she would be seen as a feminist. She was quite a feminist for a time back then, but I'm just getting the words in today's world, feminist, feminist, okay? So she wanted to be taken seriously. She worked bloody hard and she really, really wanted to be taken seriously. Not another giggling showgirl. That came a lot across in this reading, by the way. And I think I know why now, because later on now we're going to talk about her husband and why that's coming across as showgirl, giggling showgirl kind of thing. How did she feel about her husband? Okay, Laurence Olivier. She loved the way his mind worked. She was hard to impress and he was intellectual and eccentric enough to keep her on her toes. And he was a beautiful man, a real showstopper in the way he carried himself and how his presence lit up a room. But he could be cruel and formidable too, as they both could be. So she's not saying it's all him. She's saying she could just be as easily cruel and vindictive as him. OK, they interacted the best together. And her fondest memories were when they were talking about films and writing and theatre to throw around different concepts and ideas about how or why a character would do a particular thing. Um, and they like to have healthy debates over this. So. Almost like um, they might go to a theatre show and she might say, well, this actress, not the actress itself, but the character in the play, I think she did this because of this. And he'd be like, no, it wasn't. It's because of this. And they actually really like to have debates on this as well. So that's when they got on the along the most. Um, what else did she say here? She did say she disliked him the most in the public eye. It's his ego needed for him to be fawned over by impressionable, stupid starlets not worth their weight in gold. No decorum, I heard. So that was pretty harsh, like heavy. But now I understand it because apparently he did cheat on her a lot and had lots of affairs. So now I get why near the end of this reading, you know, I didn't know until the end of it that that's why it's because he was cheating on her regularly and having all these affairs so that's why she felt they were all stupid giggly little showgirls that's why she's coming out with these really strong words um let's see and in time she grew bitter over this this is what broke her the way she would allow herself to be treated or humiliated and she didn't walk away she was too proud um so it's almost like it's almost like almost when back then you would let them get away with it. Not everybody, but her, she would let them get away with it. And she was just like, oh, yeah, he's just doing one of his silly little things again, you know, or he's doing this. I'm just so over this now. It's so pathetic, that kind of thing. But she never left him. And in a way, that's what she regrets, because it's almost like she felt she was strong enough to handle it all. And he's just a little boy playing around, having his fun. He'll come back tomorrow. He'll be hung over. God knows who he's been with. But... You know, it's just just letting blow off steam kind of thing when really it was breaking her. It was breaking her. You know, she always had this kind of the way she carried herself was very graceful, very elegant. She was always trying to that's how she was trying to be perceived. OK. Um. so the way she would. So let's see. In time, she grew bitter over this. This is what broke her. The way she would allow herself to be treated or humiliated and she didn't walk away. She was too proud. She tried to fob off the others like they were insignificant girls that could not match up to her level of intellect, but that only worked for so long. Ultimately, it does look like it was a twin flame kind of connection, okay? Um, it wasn't until it became unbearable and she couldn't mask her anger or disappointment anymore that it would come out in a barrage of verbal abuse. So it was definitely like a twin flame connection. And that's kind of what broke it down, where she held on to all these emotions, the affairs and the, the anger and everything for so long. It got to a stage where it was just 
coming out of her. Like she would say the worst possible things to him to get to him because she's been putting up with crap for so long. I hear that a dam, a dam burst. It's almost like a dam of emotions and it burst. And then it's almost like she had to get out years of pain for the way she felt treated and abused. Um, and she says a bar barrage of verbal abuse to him as well. Okay. She says they were both in the wrong. She stood, you know, she stayed with him for a start and then he was bad for the way he treated her with all the affairs. So as bad as each other in a way. So she gets that now. But back then it was like, it, it broke her. Okay. Now, the last part of this reading, guys, is... Is there any actor she likes in today's world? Okay. Morgan Freeman was one of them. His voice is calm and soothing. Um, it's almost like, and the way she's trying to get across, you know, Shawshank Redemption, if you've seen that film, oh God, I've seen it about six times now. The way he can portray himself with so few words and just his eyes and just his hands and his mannerisms. She's th I'm hearing he's elite. That's what she thinks of him. Okay. Now, I said about females as well, and she said some of the females have gone off the rails and it's not so much about their craft, the craft anymore as in acting. It's more about the attention and the branding came across strongly. So I think she's on about when these actresses are all over magazines like Dolce & Gabbana, Prada, social media, Instagram, that kind of thing. It, it's, it's almost like more to do with being branding now and what money you can get out of certain contracts with fashion houses than the actual acting itself. She does say she likes Robin Penwright. That was the one in Forrest Gump, who I th is amazing. OK. And she said a Spanish actress as well, who's known for theatre and not many films. And uh, guys, what did my head in? It wasn't, it, it sounded like Marjorie, but that doesn't sound like a Spanish name. And it wasn't Mary, Marjor Marjorie something. OK, that's all I could actually pick up on that one. It was like, it was very hard to, to tune into that last bit there. She started to fade out a little bit. So that's everything on Vivian Lee. I don't mind doing a part two, guys. I, I think she's amazing. I think she's amazing. It is sad as well, because you still feel like so much anger near the end of her life. There's so much anger and resentment and just holding it in for all that time, you know, because you're proud and you want to be proud. And I've been there myself, so I kind of relate to her there. But that is the reading. I really hope you enjoyed it, guys. And I will do another one very soon. Love you all. Bye.